Can we go back to, uh, you mentioned earlier and said that you uh, got shot by the cops? Yeah. Tell me about this situation. Mistaken identity. Really? Yeah. Where were you when it went down? Stockton. Just Stockton, on the street? California. Just hanging out or what were you doing? I was just in Stockton, California, mistaken identity. Got shot in my chest by my heart. And then that whole situation, people look at it like, you know, some kids look at it like, damn, he hard, he got shot by police. Because I said it in the song, Fun Luck, I'm Really Him. But really what I meant by that is like, it, it's just a battle scar. I really him. I really came from that. I really come from this. And I'm really humbling myself mentally and I'm really growing. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? I'm really him. I'm a strong individual. But people took comprehend it the wrong way. Do you get money out of the cops because they shot you? Nah. Really? Nah. So they can I just had... shoot you and it's just whatever, huh? I wouldn't even know. That's fucked. Right. As soon as that situation happened, you know, what I thought about, I was like, wow, this whole time I was in school, they never taught me how to present myself in front of an officer. Mm. You know, laws or nothing like that. I didn't know nothing except in that situation. I was like, just just in the room, just like bleeding out, just like, whatever happens, happens type shit. And I was like, you know what? This is not going to happen coming around again. You know what I'm saying? Did they immediately figure out that you weren't who they were attempting to apprehend? I don't even know. Really? You just yeah. woke up in the hospital or? Just woke up. Yeah, basically. Well, my eyes back up, still bleeding, still in handcuffs. Other than that, I just got going about my business after that and kept pushing my music. Really? Yeah. Holy but that shit. was that was like when that, was that? Yeah. Six months ago. Six months. Yeah. And the bullet went right by your fucking heart. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Whoa. That's yeah. crazy, man. But what, so people got the wrong idea? People thought that you were sort of using that as a way to act hard or whatever? Is that, is that what yeah, you're people telling me? Use it, people thought it like that, but I thought of it as promotion. I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this as to market myself, to promote it. It's flipping to something positive. Right. You want to play? You want to do that? All right, watch what I do with it. Oh, it's weird how anything that's bad that happens to you. I don't know if you saw this video. There's a viral video of this kid who ran in here and tried to put a gun in my face. Yeah. And like... You know, nothing bad happened because he didn't shoot me and we beat the fuck out of him and he had to go to the hospital. He's still in jail. But it's like the fact that something really bad almost happened to me, all of a sudden I'm on the news, I'm on Inside Edition, I'm getting all these followers and everything. It's like, it's weird when something like real bad happens, there's it, usually a pretty clear silver lining on it. You got to use it to your advantage. Something yeah. bad happened. Flip yeah. it. I had to take that advantage. I'm like, all right, I'm going on all these people's podcasts to talk about this bad thing that just happened to me. The blogs do it to us all the time, rappers especially. Yeah, you know, exactly. You watch what you say around people that have certain platforms because they flip your words. They're that's, just taking advantage of what you're saying. That's part of being a rapper these days is knowing how to sort of, how to game the media. It's the knowing. You not did every, it expertly with that freestyle. Yeah, but not every rapper is supposed to know that because then every rapper would be bop, bop, bop. But that's they're all trying. That's why everybody's got some stupid face tattoo. Everybody got some dyed hair. Well, I only think it's a stupid face tattoo if it has no meaning. Right. No, I'm not saying bad yeah. things about all face tattoos, but yeah. sometimes you see some 17-year-old kid and he got his whole face covered up and it's just so obvious that he's just trying to be a meme. And it's just like, holy fuck, how the fuck did we end up here? Those are the 50-50 people I call them, people that want to be seen but don't want you to see what they're going through. Mm. So it's always pain behind somebody, you know. I never judge a book by its cover. Mm. You put a lot of your pain into your music? Mm. I try to... Thing what I do with my messages and my story, I don't want to put it on one song and a couple of songs. I try to stretch it out as long as I can so you can hear the evolve. So right. every album has a niche you never knew about me or a story you never heard about me. Like, wait, I never knew that. He never said that his first album. Mm. I thought he came out by his whole truth. Now, like, no, I'll, I'll continue to do that in and out. Deliver. That's the manipulation of reverse psychology, like I said. It's like me making a song, and then you thinking I'm just saying bullshit, like, and the whole time, I'm like, humble yourself, be wise, man. Right. And then spinning message, didn't tell you, I got shot by the police when I was 21. I'm just throwing you off. It's like a pebble. Boom. Right. You know, the beat would be banging. Boom, boom, boom. Then I'll say something. You won't even, it just blow past you. But then when you listen to it a second time, you might hear part of it. Yeah. So it's always something new. I try to always, like, figure out how to put a message in somewhere and twist it. Right. Like a little subliminal to myself instead of targeting other rappers. Yeah. That's why I did the freestyle like that because I'm not afraid to be laughed at. Mm. I want to be laughed at on my site. Laugh at me on my channel, on my blog, on my Instagram, on my platform so I can boost my comments up. Mm. Do, do that on my shit. You know what I'm saying? It's interesting though because I feel like anybody who really knows about rap was able to see the talent 
in that performance. Like, even though it was kind of spastic and all over the place, that there was a lot of people yeah. watching it who were like, yo, that shit was sick as fuck. Even though, like, a lot of people were looking at it from, like, a meme context. That's why it was brilliant. It's because a lot of people were able to look at it as just funny. But then people who were, like, real pay attention were, like, able to identify. They're like, whoa, he's really he's doing his thing. You're an ingenious decision. Do mm. you know who Chrissy Teigen is? Yeah. She's one that stood out to me that she was tweeting about how she watched it 20 times or some shit. Yeah. That's what she said. She watched it 20 times. She's like, it keeps getting crazier. Chrissy Teigen opened up big doors for Stockton. Not she just did. Haiti Baby, for Stockton. Every, <laughs> you know, when they posted, they put Stockton's very own Haiti Baby. I'm like, oh. Yo, you must have had everybody hitting you up about it. Was that crazy? Yeah, I mean, it was crazy, but you got to sense since it was planned out, it didn't feel how other people thought it would feel. So mm -hmm. I was already like, okay, yeah, right. about time. Yeah. You know, I thought Follow Me was going to do that because I wore, you know, it's certain stuff I do. I wore Black Air Forces high top. I knew that was a meme at the time. Took uh -huh. my shirt off, did a little B2K dance. I know they're on tour again. It's little marketing stuff I do, like little niches I do to throw people off to see, okay, where's he going with this? Then I boom. <laughs> You're doing all the stuff that labels are supposed to do for artists. But you can do it on your own if you do your research. Well, if I you're smart enough that University. you have that intuition. YouTube yeah. University. What else do you learn how to do on YouTube? Um, I would type in business management one on one. Just I did that at first. And um Leonard Cohen, um, we type um even though people say bad stuff about um, Dame Dash, typing to Dame Dash, what can I learn from him? What can I learn from Jay Z? What can I learn from these people? Yeah. Who are their mentors? I just started typing in shit. Dame Dash definitely worth learning about, even if at some point you also have to learn, like, damn, Dame Dash is a little aggressive. Dame Dash is a little wild, bro. But like, I you, fuck with him, but I he's... Need a, I need a side you know, of, every, of every boss in the game. I need a, 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 a personality trait from each one. Mm -hmm. you, can, you feel me? Dame Dash has that dog, but he's full-time dog. Right. I got to be a dog in the city, so I need to know when to use it. Right. When no, to call real. people out when they're being a coward, a yeah. weaker individual. When to, you know, it's all about placement and timing. Dame Dash is good for that of, in terms of just being bold and just not being afraid to just tell somebody what the fuck is up. He does not give a shit. Yeah. Anybody else you look up to? I know it's a lot. A lot of people definitely could see the lyrical influence from Young Thug. Is that accurate? Yeah. I got Young Thug, Mystical, Silk the Shaka. Mm. Um, Buster Rhymes, I got a few times. I've seen that here and there. Um. Mm, what else? I got a lot of oldies too. A lot of people was comparing me to a lot of old artists. They're like he has soul in him. Mm. But yeah, of course the Young Thug Mystical, they're probably and Bone Thugs. Mm. They reached out. They didn't reach out, but um, one of them posted me on a page. I just like to be posted on your platform, basically. Yeah. You, like, even if you make it fun of me, I'm happy. I'm like, hey man, I appreciate it. Even the people who's making fun of you, I was like, man, that joke was crazy. I like that. <laughs> they was like, man, you're, you're you're different. I'm like, if you hit somebody up, if somebody's talking shit and you hit them up. And are like, man, if you just show love, then it's like chances are that they're going to have to find it in their heart to show love back. And I know half the people that on the Internet, it's a joke in sight. So one of my ideas was to make a joke in sight, like make a, a own separate Instagram just to roast, like roast mm. every picture. Like, yeah, that's what War Star is. It's just big roast. Yeah. But I, I'd rather profit off you roasting on me on my platform. Shit. It's a fact. Big facts. But getting on World Star or whatever is a good entry point towards entry getting point, people on your platform. Me messing with Dizzer, me messing with Empire, good entry point in my career. I right. know those steps for a reason. Have you been doing all the label meetings since that, that freestyle took off or were you doing label meetings before that or what's, what's your thought process on that? After the freestyle. I needed to get all eyes on me like Tupac said. Just to grab grab people's attention real quick. Look at this. Mm. Boom. Now I got a, 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 a song coming out, Blue Dragon. Boom. They go see that. And they go, mm. like, oh, that's what... It, that intertwines with the freestyle. Like, yeah, it's all a part of my master plan. Mm. It, it just ba basically the label C is a method to the madness. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's right. not just a bullshit lucky. Well, I mean, they're happy when you're smart, I think, because they want you to be able to, uh, you know, sort of spark, spark marketing plans. Like, if you can make yourself go viral, that's great. Because a lot of these labels are basically just their entire job is trying to make people go viral that are not inherently going to go viral. Yeah. And I just didn't want a gimmick. You know what I'm mm. saying? And it's so and it's so much it's so like I'm a hypocrite, of course. I'm my best critic. But gimmick to me, like even clout chasing, those two words, people just feel like, oh anybody's clout chasing. Like some people reach out to me, I don't look at this clout chasing. My like, kids be like, Oh man, you 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 do this, man, you do I wanna do just like that. You know, I could reply, that's clout chasing, you know what I'm saying? But I don't because I look at it like like that that's worth more than money, if it makes sense. Like, to me, for me to inspire somebody, I feel like that's worth more than money. But when, what you said about, like, the music-wise, 
like to go back to reflect on part of the music and the freestyles, like it's a word. It's called um, what's it called? F I S S O N, 18th century French word that we looked up on um, Google. You said fission. Fission. It's like a um, a skin orga- orgasm you get off music and melodies. Oh, I don't know. And I never, I, I never that. knew I got that. Skin orgasm. Yeah. So what? Like you, you, you hear music and it just like makes your skin stand up. You have an orgasm your in your skin. Up. Yeah. That's what that is. Always got that. Every time I hear sounds. Like nails on a chalkboard type thing. That'll give it to you too. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like those sounds. <laughs> do you um? Do you smoke weed or? Mm-hmm. You, 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 you Dude, smoke I just weed? smoke weed. I don't do nothing else. I don't do no other drugs. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I got because I, you gotta understand. I got. I had ADHD. They tried to make it seem like that was a huge disorder for me growing up. They tried to put you on Adderall as a kid? They they did, and they, it would like make me hella depressed. Really? And depression, if I, then I would stop, my um, reverse from depression would be anger. Mm. So I would lash out for un, like reasons that I wouldn't even know. So that's when I would like, I would try to humble myself. Then I looked into myself and was like, you know what? Why am I like this? What is this? Why don't, why don't I feel comfortable in my own skin at least? Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? It's not, I'm from Stockton. It's not millions of black people. See, I'm real, I grew up around a lot of Vietnamese, Laos, Thai, Cambodians, and Hispanics. Uh-huh. So I didn't get, really get to see my culture really evolve. That's why I'm repping so hard. I'm so proud right. to be who I am. That's why you named yourself that as well? You're yeah. re- re- proud of your Haitian heritage? I put it, put it on me. California Haitian. Right. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to represent because a lot of people out here don't even know who you are. We all come from Africa at the end of the day. You know, the motherland. But Even me? Yep. Even yeah. you. Long time That's why ago. you got tatted and you got the swag <laughs> like that. You, think, that you think? Yeah. I'm trying to find my way to Wakanda. Oh. Mm. Slowly. <laughs> 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 Holy shit! I, I gotta rewatch that. Interviews too. Wh- which ones? Um, the one you did with DJ Vlad, and the one DJ Vlad did on you. Oh, okay. So cool. I had to do a little research before. Oh, I appreciate that. I actually enjoyed interviewing Vlad a lot. That was fun. Right. Yeah, he's from Smart dude. the Bay too. So I was he just is. like, I was like, oh, that's cool. So when I meet these people, it's not gonna be like something new to them. Like, no, they, yeah. You know, and if you, you if you meet people and you're educated about who they are, that's actually that is a big part that stresses me out about where I'm at in life is yeah. that I'm there's a million motherfuckers that know about me and I haven't had the time to research them and I want to like meet people and know about them and shit. But like yeah. something like going to Rolling Loud, I'm meeting so many artists and shit and like the reality is I'm meeting so many people from labels. The reality yeah. is I don't know who the fuck a lot of them are and sometimes that can be offensive and I, w- I want to be respectful of everybody. I want to be a, a good student of the culture and be on top of everything. It's challenging though. You can't please everybody. And, Facts. And, and you're doing good. Like this, your shit is doing good, bro. I appreciate like that. if no one ever said that, you're doing a great job. My you know friend, what I'm thank you. You've led a lot, lot of African Americans on this show. You're doing that. great. Keep doing what you're doing. You you only will evolve. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Your team is gonna get stronger. When your team gets stronger, then you won't have to worry about going. Everything's a FaceTime. Mm. Everything should be a FaceTime for you at a certain point in life. That's like, the, I, that's what I like about doing podcasts is that it's like the idea that you could just interview enough people. Every time you do an interview, you're just increasing your network. I just had this the Danny Lay girl here. Boom! That's because I gave an interview to a smaller artist named Emotional mm-hmm. Zan, yeah. and that they happen to have the same uh, or man, not, not manager, but somebody that they work with was the same. So he got me the interview with her, and then he also manages the Diaz brothers, Small World, Stockton Connection. Yeah. Boom! It's like that, but that that's so dope. It's like to think that like just because you fucked with one person, that you could just create like create more and more connections, more networks to be able to do more and more. You should have somebody taking notes every interview you do so you can write a book on your experience of art, of hip-hop. Fuck and a book. Then, We're then, making YouTube videos. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do the YouTube video. <laughs> Shit. All right, I'll write the book. Thought about writing a book. You thinking about writing a book? Yeah, I'm, I'm writing one right now. Really? What's it called? I you about to pull out a notepad? Funkadelic Soul Rhythm. Funkadelic Soul Rhythm? Freedom Thugs, Jungle Bamboo, California Haitian Love Vendetta. These are all working titles, options? Working titles, there's a book right there. It looks like a book. This is just like uh, I create little, make little quotes in my head and write them down to see what I can lead on, mm. what I can tell after that. And even if I don't write a book, I just I, like practice it. Mm. You know, Oprah said, um, do like a little map. When I was young, we did like a little map, a little island map, build your island mm. you know, of your career and stuff, your dream house and all this stuff. Okay. So just, just making sure I keep my imagination as high as I can, then I know I'll always be able to reach the youth. Right. Because once I lose my creativity and my imagination, I'm worthless. Yeah. No, then that's fact. I'll just facts. be an individual with a couple of dollars in my pocket. You, I don't want to be an individual with a couple of dollars. You've certainly harnessed that, though. 
you, you've, you've got that childlike creativity still intact, don't you think? I got to keep that mindset. Yes. I can't. That's why when I see negative energy or bad energy, fuck fighting them or fuck shooting them, I, I'm, I'm down there running out the room because I cannot be around. If I see, if I go in the room and I see dark purple or, or any dark colors that's, and, it's, and it's vibrant, if that makes sense, because I feel off that. I feel somebody's emotion. I know when someone's going through something. Mm. And I'll just walk out. Like, I'll, like, I'll get disgusted. Like, my stomach will turn. Cause it's You've like, got, like, an, an internal mood ring. Yeah. That's gauging like, the scenario. If I can write that down. You can write that down. Internal mood ring. Internal. That might be actually, that might be the name of my next album. It's, I'm going to use it to express the, um, what it is. No, but I mean, that, that, that is, you know, life is all about intuition and experience and having been through scenarios enough times that you can identify the patterns that are going on. Like, you know, so like I, I feel like given where I'm at and how much experience I have, it's very easy for me to meet somebody who's a con artist or a bullshitter and to know. Yeah, off the rip. You don't have that when you're young. It's hard. You have to develop that by meeting a lot of people and realizing who's a bullshitter and who's legit and going yeah. through so many experiences. It's like there's stuff that seems so obvious to me right now that a year ago I had no clue about. Yeah. You know? That's like me. That's kind of like me saying like the way I'm feeling right now, my mindset now might not be the same six years from now. Definitely not. De definitely not. No, nah, of course. You're always growing. You're always changing. Hopefully right. in six years you don't have the same mentality you have right now. Yeah. Okay, that makes, it has to change. That makes perfect. It has to change. Yeah, you're right. Don't stay the same. That's you why I didn't always do all this. You can't put in all this work and stay the same. And no. people don't want you to stay the same. People, if you, if you, let's say, like your music career gets super popping, all of a sudden you're you're killing it. The problem with being a popular recording artist is that you then have to fucking also keep developing people won't like you if you keep doing the same thing over and over. Even Beyonce, you know, if she just puts out the same album two times in a row. It's going to be bad for her. The fans are going to turn on her. She has to develop every fucking chapter of the way. And she's one of the most beloved artists in the world, you know? Yeah. You got to make them hate you. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> that's, that's but the, that's, you have to challenge that's them That's the for quote sure. Kanye West told him so. Really? You got to make them hate you. He said that. <laughs> nah. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> that was the conscious right here. No, but that's interesting. Well, I, I mean, but there is an extent to that. It's like every Kanye project has been like radically different than the one before it, and that's what's been able to keep him. I think that's art. Yeah. That's like what makes it artistic. Mm. Like when I said um, the quote, the, like I said, a, like a fake quote, Kanye said, um, make, them, make, make them hate you. Like, I, and I, I know that's a fake quote, but using that instance, and people will comprehend that, and that's when you get these antics they pull Mm. The weird shit, and then the beefing with hella other people their age, and trying to be hella competitive in a, the wrong way. Right. And I see how that can be misled. Because what I just said, like, I can see how that can be misled. I mean, now, you went viral in a way where you just sort of put your skills on display. The easy way to go viral, in my opinion, is like starting some fake drama. Yeah. Anybody can. Do I didn't want to. I don't want to. I never want to do that. What the. It's no point because it's like, I don't know you. You don't know me. You ain't never doing a rock at me. It pitches your cream, baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what are we funking for? Especially yeah. if you're embracing hip hop, regardless of what race you are, we're in the same category at this point. Right. As soon as, soon as you embrace hip hop, you know, black, white, or whatever you are, like, we shouldn't even be on that type of hype. We just lost Nipsey. Mm -hmm. We've been lost Pac. You motherfuckers ain't learned until, like, everyone's gone. Like, what, what's, what is it going to take? It's, I guess it's going to take people like me to just do my job and influence and continue the marathon and, you know, hope for the best. N Nipsey meant a bunch to you? Yeah, he meant a lot. I got really? Nipsey, Nipsey All Money tatted right here. Really? Just inspirational. Even outside the music, um, him as a, him watching him doing his interviews. Yeah. Even, like, everything. You know what I'm saying? Hella inspirational. Yeah. No, that makes sense for sure. Just because he's, like, you know, a really, really strong role model for... Just anyone who wants to do th do their thing independently, music wise. He made me feel comfortable um, representing where I'm from because he represents where he's from, and he's from L he's from LA, but he represented his race and ethnicity and shit. So I was like, it made me feel more comfortable representing my flag. Yeah, little stuff like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, losing him, it, yeah, kind of hurt. Cause it's like, damn, I didn't even get to meet him. Yeah, hold a conversation. But now, now that he's gone, where I believe now he's gone. His message and his soul spread it everywhere. So now I get to speak to you. Now when mm. I pray, I get to speak to you. 
Yeah. There's so. a weird benefit to dying young. Let's be real. Because yeah. then you get a chance to be like immortalized in your prime form. You know? Yeah. There's a reason why Pac and Biggie are so legendary. Because we never got to see him be a 50-year-old dude joking around on Instagram. Yeah. Because oh. I, I, I didn't know who ODB was. I didn't know who Big L was. Then once I checked into their music, and then you, you, you know, once you do research about the fallen angels in hip-hop, you start to appreciate it. Mm. If you don't, you're, like, you're in the wrong category. But you're smart that you're able to appreciate it because I feel like a lot of young kids, they don't really have like the ability to like look outside of themselves and realize, like listen to something from 1995 and realize like, oh, okay, that's why this was dope because this was new and different and this wasn't happening at the time. You know, if, like if you're a stupid person, you listen to Big L and you're like, oh, well, this just sounds like somebody rapping. But if you get it, you're like, no, this is like the first time that motherfuckers were being this fucking funny on songs. Yeah, he was talking shit. He was talking a whole lot of shit. He was saying crazy, cocky, confident shit that, like, you know, I had never heard anything like it when I first heard it when I was young, you know? Beastie Boys, too. Like, they beats fucking hard. Beastie Boys changed everything. <laughs> that shit is hard. Like, when you really research, then you won't feel like, you know, some rappers feel like they created everything. I made this, I made this. And I, I did my research on a lot of artists. I'm just like, oh, so nothing I'm doing is new. Mm. Everything I'm doing is just being re. Reintroduced, yeah, reappropriated for a new generation and in yes. a different way, you know, in a different way, yes, yeah. yes, that's perfect, yeah, man. I feel like that's 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 the key is like being able to look outside of yourself and, and take influences from different places because you know, it's the worst is when you hear somebody rap and they have a bar that's like blah 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 like blah 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 and it's like the and then the first blah 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 is like the name of a popular song and then the second blah 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 is the name of the artist who made that song, but it's like a recent song. It's like, no, you're not allowed to just say, I'm dri like, I'm dripping like gonna. Yeah. No, not allowed. You can't just say the name of a fucking, like, an artist and then, like, the thing he always says. Yeah. That's the most boring thing you could possibly do. You got to think of something funny. At that point, you're not inspired. At that point, you're being lazy. Yeah. I have so many pet peeves when it comes to rap. You're supposed to. It's your opinion. Yeah. And I also never want to hear anybody ever say, uh, if, if it's going to make dollars, it got to make sense or whatever. Like okay. anything like that. Please just never <laughs> say that again. I just, I've heard so many people my, say that. It drives me crazy. My past records, I said a lot. I said a lot of crazy stuff. And I listened back to it. But even though it was ignorant, I feel like it was necessary because now you see, like, damn, he really grew. Like he's on a whole other path. Like we see what stage he was at and he's mm. admitting it. Yeah. And he's and he's carrying it with him, and he's like, "Yeah, I still stand on that." Mm. But now I'm I'm developing. You you see him, you see my crap. I didn't just pop out of nowhere. You seen the freestyle? That was just to grab your attention. Mm. Now watch me work. Definitely, watch me work. Walk, watch me nay nay. <laughs> Dude, all right. I appreciate you coming on the show and shit. It's been very, very informative to get to figure out what you got going on. You're a very, you're a very smart guy, very bright mind. Thank you. Appreciate that. I got high hopes for you. I believe in you. I must be in a good mood today because I was telling Danny Lay the same thing. But I fuck with her. She's cool as shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in her. <laughs> I believe in you. I believe in all of you. Everybody watching this out there, I believe in you. We believe. Do you believe in them? Yes. Cool. That's good to know. <laughs> all right. I got to go eat a, a dinner with T Grizzly for this new show that he's doing. T Grizzly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's your show called? It's called like Dinner with Grizzly. Dinner with Grizzly. You sit there and you eat food with him, and like I guess he has like Instagram wow. models bringing you food. For real? Yeah, isn't that weird? Eating weird, ass, man. Weird, eating ass. <laughs> Hopefully, T Grizzly doesn't serve me any ass. <laughs> <laughs> big, big porn stars on the plate. <laughs> oh, their ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, good point. Yeah, <laughs> I just don't want to eat T Grizzly's ass. That's disturbing. Yeah, I fuck with T Grizzly. His that one record that's never gonna be forgotten. Definitely. Yeah, that that that's big, a fact. Big drop. That's, that's a good example, man. He's fire. he's such a big hit right there it's kind of like where do you it's hard to live up to the, the next shit after that he had a run of massive songs yeah but it, it's all about it's all about marketing too you mm -hmm. know depending on what you put out because you know he, next song he can have with Sway Lee and just you'd be like whoa he blew past that old record I feel like talent like if you have the talent then it's like whatever even if you're not popping at that moment if you really have the talent if if, if your hype is all image based then it's gonna be hard to get the hype back but if you're just good musically yeah then you always have a, a path yeah. back into their hearts. It, it, you know, what I like to say is the talented people is not, definitely, I'm not talking about two degrees, I'm talking about every artist. We're so talented, we get comfortable, and this is speaking to every artist, not even my predicament, up, below, we're so talented, we get like so comfortable and big-headed mm. 
that is like like that shit consumes people's souls and and then it, once it does that your music is just like watered down you know <laughs> can i promote this bars sure yeah, yeah. Aqua, hydrate yourself. You know what I'm saying. Boost up your your soul again. You know. Or Arrowhead, yeah. You know, it doesn't mean necessarily go back to the hood and 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 do hood things with your friends. You know what I'm saying. Just just be inspired. Walk around, see a billboard. Be inspired. I'm inspired by this lighter. Really. I'm gonna use it for the next song. Ooh, this I may be a my Lil Wayne type feel. Well, hey, anybody that makes a song called "On Some Shit," we're probably gonna have to. Support oh, it. Yeah. We'll be putting that on the Spotify playlist real quick. Name a percentage. Throw awesome it at me. Awesome shit. There yeah, you go. Right. Split yeah. the publishing. Yeah, we got <laughs> <laughs> All right. Haiti Baby, uh, you got anything big planned coming out soon? Anything crazy in the works? New single dropping, Blue Dragon, dropping everywhere, premiering on Complex. Mm. Um, shout out shout out my management, my team, um, shout out Empire, and shout out all the young artists in, in, you know my age that's doing their thing and we here to stay, and especially me. I'm trying to change the game. Not trying. I'm going to change the game. Um, the game will be changed. Yeah, the game will be changed. It's a fact. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, Thank man. Thank you for coming on. Very yeah. excited to see what's to come. Yeah. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Pow, 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 pow. You got to take me to either Haiti or Stockton. I'll take you to Stockton or yeah. Haiti. Yeah. Either one. We're going to take you to both. I'm sure they're pretty similar. Stockton going to show you love, too. Yeah? Yeah, you all they watch. Ooh, okay. <laughs> there you, you go. Finna, you finna go no jumper? Hey. What? Yeah. That's big for the city. All right. Stockton, book me. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>